Hey everybody, this is International Master David Proust for Chess.com and today I'm going to show you one single endgame idea that is of staggering beauty as well as purity and simplicity. And I'm calling it the Reti idea after Richard Reti who composed the position that you see before you as an endgame study. But of course, Richard Reti had a million amazing chess ideas. So there are actually a lot of ideas that perhaps deserve to be called the Reti idea. This idea is basically an advanced, yet not hard to understand, look at how the king actually moves in chess and what his true potential and speed is. Because a lot of people think that a king moves one space per move. But it turns out that diagonal and straight are two different distances, right? As some of you know, diagonal is root 2 over 2 as far as straight. And in fact, on the chessboard as well, you'll see that there's a different geometry to the king moving diagonally. So first look at this position and consider white's quandary. It's white to play. The white pawn is headed this way to queen and the black pawn is headed this way to queen. If you first think about this position, Consider the white king in relation to the black pawn. Does he have any chance of catching that pawn before it queens? Evidently not, right? There's no way he's going to chase down this pawn. In fact, he's two steps behind him. Okay? Okay, second issue. You've got this pawn which could potentially queen, except the black king seems to be on him. Can your king get to this pawn before the black king gets him? Well, let's see. not even close, right? So, White seems to have lost the game, and Reti published this, and White to play and draw, and it must have stunned many people. However, White does have a way to draw. He has to move his king to its full capacity, and that means diagonally. So he plays king g7, heading one step towards this pawn, and one step towards this pawn. So, Black is going to move his king towards the white pawn, and white is going to play king to f6. Now white's threatening to catch the black pawn, so the black pawn runs. And now white will play king to e5. Now the white king is getting close to his own pawn, very, very close. On the next move, he could defend it. If black captures this pawn, though, king f4 and the white king has captured the black pawn by reaching this little box. So let's say black keeps moving his pawn. Now the white king goes to defend his pawn. Black goes to queen and white goes to queen. And black can no longer prevent white from also getting a queen. And so this endgame will be a draw of queen against queen. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's say instead of playing king to b6, the black pawn just runs right away. Now white will play king to f6. Continuing to always travel one step towards his pawn and one step after the black pawn. If the pawn continues to run, then after king to e6, the white king is now close enough to his pawn to save it, and the game ends in a draw like this. White will get a queen. Or black could now play king to b6, getting an eye on this pawn, but then after white plays king to e5, he's got the dual threat of king d6 and king f4 like we saw before. Right? So the king moves diagonally, makes a double threat diagonally, and gets a draw. And this, by the way, is also a double attack, right? which as I've said in another video about chess tactics, the double attack is the fundamental tactic in chess, is to make two threats at once. And that's what this king is doing with his fancy, fast diagonal movements. Now, let's see one more example of this same idea. Okay. So this position is, again, white to play and draw. And again, it looks like it would be hard for the white king to catch up with this black pawn. Remember, it will be able to move two steps on its first move. So king to e8, h5, king f7, h4. Looks at first highly hopeless, right? Secondly, the black king seems to be placed very nicely to keep the white king from moving to his full potential by controlling these three squares. And he seems to be in range of the white pawn. So if white advances the pawn, it looks like the black king will catch him. Right? And now you could run this way, but you're still not going to capture this pawn. 
you're closer, but no cigar. You actually have to stop him from queening for it to count. So how should white play to save this endgame? Well, there's one way to do it. White starts with king to c8, moving apparently towards his pawn to help it out. And in fact, if black plays h5 now, white can queen his pawn because in this position, his king is stopping the black king from catching the pawn. So after king c8, the black king will step over to keep an eye on this pawn. Now, how should white continue? This move would be an error. The black king catches the pawn, and you still can't catch this pawn. So white plays king to b8. Now he's again threatening on h5 to play a6, a7, a8, escorted by his king. So the black king moves back to b5 to keep the pawn under wraps. That's the only way to keep this pawn captured. And now white plays kind of like the ready idea, king to b7, which is a step towards his pawn and a step towards that pawn. So black has to capture the pawn. White plays king c6, h5, king d5. The pawn can run as fast as it wants, but the king can run just as fast as it. And again, white has achieved a miraculous draw, just arriving in time with his king. So there's a second example of interesting ways of this interesting way of using your king. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you around on chess.com.